Are you tired of long product development cycles? Wish there's a way to speed things up? Well, you're in luck. Today, I'm revealing my top five essential habits to supercharge your product development cycles. Let's get started. Hi, I'm George Nagel, and throughout my career in oil and gas, metalworking, food safety, consulting, and even leading master classes, I have always been deeply involved in product development. By sharing these habits I've acquired throughout my career, I want to help reduce your stress and even that foreboding that can come with product development. I also want to show you how to apply some creativity and breakthrough thinking that can cause a shift of that three to five year average cycle just for an iteration to leading to eight months for a true innovation. Habit one, rule of three in communication. We're gonna start with communication because it's the single biggest problem that companies that have existed for more than two years with more than five employees all encounter. In this communication, we are going to encourage and require executives to actually set down in a strategy what the three major priorities for the company are. Then that same executive team is going to go and share it to everybody in the company. They are not going to just tell the managers, they're gonna go with the managers. The executive's gonna do the presentation to everybody in the company with managers being present. They're gonna personalize that communication at least down to the department, if not down to the individual, to tell the individual, hey, this is the three major things that we're working on and here's how you in your specific job directly impact it. This is a critical step to bring alignment and direction for everything that you're going to do. Habit two, stop the surveys. People will get excited and work faster on something that is new, leading edge, cutting, something that brings real value. If that's what you're trying to do, you need to talk to 12 to 16 customers that consider themselves to be leading innovators or leading adopters, and that's it. Don't talk to the other categorizations as you can see in this graph. What doing that does is causes a dilution. Those individuals that aren't leading innovators or leading adopters, they follow the trends. They don't set the trends. So please stop the surveys because all you're going to get back is a bunch of people who have too much time on their hands, have a gripe about something, and really just want you to lower the price. Habit three, ensemble formation. You know, people talk about teams and winning, but the other side of that is that means somebody has to lose. So a better approach is after getting those executives to communicate the top three goals and to make sure everybody is working on that is to change our frame of reference from teams to ensembles. And we say ensembles because ensembles understand that for them to succeed, everyone has to succeed. They go through and practice and practice and play together to make sure that everybody knows where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, and they trust that the other people through that practice, through that play, will do their job. The way we get that practice, the way we get that play with each other is through ideation. What you're really doing is getting people interacting and exchanging ideas. And it's through that exchange of ideas that an ensemble will form, especially if you have clear direction as set by that executive team. By the way, if this video is giving you a new perspective or enhancing some ideas for you, please like, subscribe, turn on those notifications so that you make sure you always catch some of the valuable content that we're producing for you. Habit four, scheduling. We're gonna utilize Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law says that the amount of work that we're gonna get done is proportional to the amount of time that we have to do it. So that means if we have too much time, we're gonna fill that time with work that really doesn't add value. My experience says for almost everything, eight months is enough time. That means from the time that we start those conversations with our customers to the time that we actually launch. Here's what it does, is it forces a dedicated team that they're only working on this project. It forces that you schedule customer meetings well in advance so that you're moving through the cycle. It also forces those meetings with the executives, again, well in advance. This way, nobody can dodge the meeting. We set out with the executives 
in habit number one, what's really important? You said this was, there's no reason to reschedule or miss a meeting. Habit five, customer prototype approval first. When we can get customers, those 12 to 16 individuals, to look at a prototype and say, yes, that brings me value, and here's how I would implement it, and I want it, the executive meetings go much smoother. They go much faster. What you're really doing is avoiding that internal dilution that takes place because of some internal requirement that ultimately makes customers look at something that you want to bring to the market as, eh, that's a nice improvement, but it really doesn't give me the extra value that I'm looking for. Implementing these five essential habits will revolutionize your product development cycles. Thanks for taking the time to watch.